Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are still very much out of sync. Clerk, call a roll, please. Trustee Raga. Here. Trustee Benfer? Here. Trustee Oliver? Here. Trustee Burgess? Here. Supervisor Mayor? Here. Approval of the agenda for Tuesday, September 25th, 2018. So moved. Motion Trustee Burgess? Second. Second Trustee Benford. Okay. Any questions? Call a roll. Trustee Rava? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. We have two sets of minutes to approve. The first one we have is Tuesday, August 28, 2018. Sold. Motion Trustee Burgess. Second. Second Trustee Oliver. Any I questions? Have, I have a couple of questions. Sure. To, maybe to clarify. For the, um, the, we noted in the Senior Citizen uh, Township Committee, mm -hmm. um, Trish, the members of the committee will be recommended by the township supervisor and then voted on by the board. I think we also noted that language in the youth services committee, but it's not listed in the safety township committee or the audit township committee. So we want to add that sentence to each one so we know how the members of the committee are appointed. Mr. Spina. It's listed in two, but it's not listed in two. The, the items on the agenda tonight for the Senior Committee and the Youth Committee, we're establishing a Senior Citizens Committee and a Youth Committee. Those are going to be standing committees, and that's the ordinance that the board is being asked to vote on tonight. Mm -hmm. You guys had talked previously about um, setting up an audit committee to um, institute the recommendations of the forensic auditor. 
uh, that's a committee that's, that's different than the U. Those are statutory committees. That would be a committee that's appointed by the supervisor uh, to handle that. Okay, and then the safety township committee? Uh, whether or not you guys are going to do a safety committee, I don't know. That was a recommendation. That's up to you guys if you want to do it. That would be the same type of committee as the audit committee, which is the regular committee of the board. Okay, any other questions? Call roll. Trustee Rockland? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. The second seven minutes is Tuesday, September 11, 2018. Oh. Motion Trustee Burgess. Second. Second Trustee Raga. Any questions? Seeing none, call a roll. Trustee Raga? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Supervisor Report. Letter A. Siebert Group Proposal for Cemetery Wall. I was hoping that Bob Martin would be here, uh, but in front of you, you have a quote. Um, before, a few meetings ago, the board approved the replacements or the fixing of the Boardman Cemetery Wall. Um, once we got out there, uh, Moose Spartan called up, Bob Martin called me up and said I'd like to meet the vendor. And the problem with that particular wall, and it looks like it might be all the way through, is that, you know, some of you in the audience might understand this, is that when you cut the grass or cut it back the wall, there's no gravel. And so the problem is that they could put the stone on and they could put it back, but they think that it's still going to push because of the water erosion. Right. Um, didn't foresee that coming um, when we came to the first proposal. Unfortunately, this is only for construction <coughs> of the wall. Um, if you look at it, I was looking at how can we quote unquote do it in pieces, is that the wall is definitely moving in and out. You can actually see it on the other side. Normally we don't want to go to Warman Cemetery for Memorial Day. You don't sit there and kind of look at like a car and look down the line of the wall, but there is an issue going on. Um, so Seaver said that they would be able to fix that one section of the wall properly, but it's going to cost us another $3,562.45. I'm not sure if anybody's actually going out there and taking a look at it. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Mayor Pat. Is he saying that once he, if we were to approve the $3,562, that once that's done, then that's like going to solve the problem for like the next how many years? Is this going to be a temporary fix or yeah. like a forever fix? That would be a forever fix for that section of the wall. So if you remember, there's a long section mm -hmm. going from the north, and then it rounds up, goes up the stairs, and then you have the stairs. And then it's a rounded section, and then it goes down the stairs, and then goes along you can actually see the wall not lining up. Okay, so Something that we didn't you know, actually prepare for, um, but we have a couple of different choices we can, in his opinion, is you can fix it how, with the money we gave before and still don't have the same problem. There was no gravel, there's nothing in there. There's no, he would have to cut it back, put the gravel down and just see what he's talking about. I think it's better to spend more now and get it fixed for for good than to make a temporary fix for maybe a little less. I'd like to see more of a permanent fix myself. And then the thing is that we'll be coming back to the board probably in the next budget year to try to fix the rest of it. I have to budget for it. Mm -hmm. So I do I have a motion. So motion trustee Burgess? I'll second. Second trustee Albert question. Is that a, at a cost not to exceed? Yes. That took three thousand five hundred sixty-two dollars and forty-five cents. Any other questions? Okay, call roll. Trustee Raga. Yes. Trustee Benford. Yes. Trustee Oliver. Yes. Trustee Burgess. Yes. Supervisor Mayor. Yes. Okay, letter B. Color blends garden order. It's so hard. You will see here, it's kind of funny, this is actually the order for tulips and flowers and everything else for the garden for the springtime. Um, as you know that people have been using the garden uh, for not only um, prom pictures and homecoming pictures, uh, they'll go out there on Sundays, they'll take family pictures out there, but we also use it to help sell the banquet facility. Uh, people you have weddings out there and then when they have the reception they go out there. This is for a quote for supplies. 
Linda, do you have the exact dollar amount? I want to make sure I got this correct. I, I'd actually like to put the order in for 3,000 tulips, not to exceed 1,050. That's shipping tax. Need a motion. Motion, Trustee Oliver. Uh, one quick question. Sure. Okay, okay. so 3,000 tulips. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we've got to go over 1,050. Yeah, 1,050. Okay. Squirrel will get about 500 of them. Okay. Second. Second, Trustee Bridges. Uh, more questions. <coughs> okay. Clerk, call roll, please. Trustee Rhonda? Uh, yes. Trustee Bentham? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mann? Yes. Letter C, DuPage Township Committee Ordinance. This would be Ordinance 18 05. See here. In Orange of the Township of DuPage Township, Will County, Illinois Establishing Committee, supporting committee chair persons, committee members, and liaison representatives. Mr. Spina, to read the whole thing or to outline it? I think outline it is fine. The board has it in their packet. Sounds good. Uh, first paragraph Whereas, in order to assist in the orderly and efficient conduct of township business, whereas after due deliberations, the board members have determined that areas appropriate for the establishment of committees include senior citizen and youth, and now therefore be ordained by William and Mayor Supervisor and the Township Board of Trustees. Section 1 Recitals the fund. The foregoing recitals are hereby incorporated into the ordinance. Section 2, establishment of committees. Section 3, selection of committee liaisons. Uh, I'll read that one. The DuPage Township Supervisor, with the advice and consent of the Township Board of Trustees, shall nominate a liaison of the aforementioned committees, who shall be a member of the Township Board of Trustees, including a supervisor, or the Township Clerk, or the Township Assessor. The liaison so appointed shall serve as a member of the committee. The committee liaison shall facilitate the sharing of information, goodwill, resources, community projects, and events between DuPage Township and various community organizations. Section 4, Duties of the Liaison. The liaison is responsible for creating the agenda, submitting said agenda to the Township Clerk and Township Staff at least 72 hours prior to the meeting date, and time to allow for required 48-hour notice of the meeting set forth by the Open Meetings Act. Section 5, Recruitment of committee members. DuPage Township Board encourages diverse applicants for appointment to committees. The committee liaison shall take an active role when seeking members. Section 6, committee membership. The senior citizen committee shall consist of not more than nine committee members, one-third over the age of 55. The youth services committee shall be comprised of not less than five members. Section 7, community procedure and meeting. Upon their initial appointment, and therefore at such times as may be necessary, the members of the standing committees here created shall meet, organize, and adopt such rules and regulations as be necessary. For all business and all compliance with the ordinance of the township and the laws of the state of Illinois. Section 8, duties of committees. The standing committees here, here and created all shall have the duty and responsibility to investigate concerns arising in their respective areas of interest to promote the best interests of the youth and senior citizens of DuPage Township. Section 9, Terms. All committee members of the standing committee serve as the pleasure of the Township Board of Trustees. The initial committee members shall serve the following terms. One-third of the members for one year, one-third of the members for two years, and one-third of the members for three years. Therefore, all committee members shall serve three three-year terms. Section 10, uh, see, the various portions of the ordinance are hereby a expressly declared to be servable, and the invalidity of such proportion of this ordinance shall now affect the validity of the portions of this ordinance. Section 11. All ordinance portions and ordinance and policies previously passed or adopted by DuPage Township that conflict with or inconsistent with the provisions of the ordinance are hereby repealed. Section 12. Effective date. This ordinance shall be full force and effect from and after its passage and approved by DuPage Township Court. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Motion, Trustee Burgess. Second. Second, Trustee Robin. Questions? Seeing none, call roll, please. Trustee Robin? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. 
Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Letter D, Senior Citizen Committee Appointments. Lynn has been doing a fabulous job of trying to get seniors who are active. I've been going to the uh, senior club meetings, speaking about the committee. Uh, right now I have four in my hand. I can pass it along to you. But we have Rita Armstrong, Lorraine Hill, Jimmy Hargrove, and Diane Eitel have shown interest in being part of the members so far. They actually filled out an application. As you will see, the application is right there. There's... So far, there's like one more person, but they have not filled out the application so far. It's in my hand. Oh, okay. Is that how you pronounce her last name? Rissetti, yeah. Rissetti. Sorry. Did you get a letter from Cecilia Douglas that she was going to see my phone? Uh, no. I don't have Cecilia. Uh, she told me she was going to. So far, no. Sorry. Do I have a motion to approve? Well, sure, go ahead. We, we need to start with your appointment as the committee liaison. Okay. Oh, so yes, you are so true. You are so true. We, we, we actually included a, a 30 day period gotcha. of time after that okay. to get the people. So okay. we have to start with your picking the liaison sure. for each committee and boards. <clears throat> gotcha. Oh, okay, so for the seniors, I like to pick uh, Trustee Burgess. Would be the liaison. And then I need a uh, motion to approve. Linda Rossetti, Lorraine well, Hill. Let's, we, we first, let's, let's, do the first let's, one. let's first get a vote for the board on the appointment of trust oh, okay. Burgess as the liaison for the senior committee. Sounds good. Okay. We have a motion to approve Trustee Burgess. Motion. Motion Trustee Oliver. Second. Second Trustee Raga. Any questions? Call roll. Trustee Raga? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. And I would next go to the liaison for the youth committee in the same process. Okay. Youth committee. Uh, liaison, I'd like to appoint myself. Need a motion? So moved. Motion, Trustee Burgess. Second trustee, yes, I. Um, second. Second trustee Oliver. Any questions? Call roll. Trustee Raga? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Okay. Now, now go back to the seniors. Well. Or do you want to wait? No, pursuant to section six of the ordinance as it was adopted, the committee member appointment shall be made. No later than 60 days after the appointment of the liaison, and no earlier than 30 days after the appointment of the committee liaison, which will allow 
the liaison oh, no. to do their job. Uh, no, earlier. Gotcha. To allow the liaison to uh, assist oh, okay. in seeking members, which is one of the duties of the liaison here, is to look to, to the community for people who are interested. So we should be naming these people mm -hmm. 30 days from today. Sounds good. So lit. There you go. In case anybody okay, else. Because there are other, other people, they just didn't fill it out. And, and this will on the board. Did. Sounds and good. More people to choose from there. Perfect. The more the merrier. Yeah. That actually worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go to the audit committee appointment. These are appointments that are made by a supervisor. Correct. Um, you know what, with or without board approval? Uh, I, I do, no, you do not need board approval. Okay. Um, I was going to put myself <coughs> on it, Mary Pat Oliver on it, and I was going to put Trish on it um, for, for right now. I'm not the liaison? No, there is no liaison. There's just more okay. of the implementation of the audit recommendations. Okay, so we're just we're working on seeing the audit um, recommendations through fruition. Correct. Okay. What were those names again? Mr. Spina, do you want to? I believe I heard the supervisor say that Bill Meyer, Bill Mayer, Mary Pat Oliver, and the uh, town clerk, uh, Stack. Patricia Stack. Patricia, I wanted to say Trish, but technically it's Patricia Stack. There you go. Okay, letter G, DuPage Township Workshops. Okay, I would like to, starting on Monday, October 1st, Monday, November 5th, Monday, December 3rd, Monday, January 7th, Monday, February 4th, Monday, March 4th, 2000. Uh, 18, of course, in this year and 2019 for next year to have workshops. The first couple can be working with uh, after the audit committee meets, I'm speaking with staff, is actually have a workshop before the entire board to see exactly where we're going, uh, what the improvements are, what type of policy and procedures we would like to recommend and implement. Uh, starting in November, they would also start budget workshops for the next year. Uh, they would be handled uh, open at 6 o'clock and be here, and of course it would be open to the public. Can I just ask that on Monday nights, I have a standing appointment from 6 until 7. I could be here at 7.15. The only um, one that would be in question would be October 1st, because the next, from November 5th, December 3rd, and on, I can you know make arrangements for that meeting mm -hmm. that I have. But this one being so close, being October 1st, would everyone be able to meet at 7.15 opposed to 6? And this would be the only month sure. that I would have that conflict because I would change my schedule then for the other months. So they would be 6 o'clock ongoing from the 1st, so the 5th, the 3rd, the 7th, the 4th, the 4th. Those would be 6 o'clock. Sure, sounds okay. good. Need a motion to approve so. uh, a meeting starting on Monday, October 1st, 2018 at 7.15. Monday, November 5th, month, uh, December 3rd. 2018, January 7, 2019, February 4, 2019, and March 4, 2019 at 6 p.m. here. So, Second motion, Trustee Burgess. Second, Trustee Raga. Any questions? Call roll. Trustee Raga? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Letter H, Township Officials Training. That's where we'd be called TOI. Uh, TOI will be from November 11 to, to November 13, 2018. This is the annual township conference. Uh, let's see here. When do you know what, where it is? Either Springfield Spring. or Pierre. Okay. Oh, there we go. Well, should be you. Oh, actually, all of you and all the department heads have gone to this, but I wanted to bring it to the board. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask for. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask for. Motion approved for the township to go to TUI. So moved. Motion Trustee Burgess. Do we know who's attending this year? Not yet. As far as the staff? No, I have not asked because I need to make sure the board said yes first. No second. Second Trustee Benford. Any questions? Call roll. Trustee Raza? Can you repeat the motion, sir? Oh, 
Got it. Call roll. Trustee Rockler? Yes. Trustee Dunford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Uh, answer your question. Well, if you have any of that, we'll have to do it in the public comment section. Otherwise, I do it for you and the whole thing goes in. We've had a lot of issues with that, so I'll be more than happy to answer it for that. Letter I. <coughs> we have Spina McGuire and Oakle. Mr. Spina. I have, I have submitted two invoices. One of them is for work done from and after August 14th was the day that I was appointed as a township attorney with the advice and consent of the board. The other is for work that was done prior to that time, during the time period, there was a conflict with the board. The town attorney had a conflict over the issue of whether he was in fact the town attorney. And I'd be looking for both of those invoices to be paid. Okay. We have two invoices in front of you. And you have a motion to approve. From Trustee Burgess. We'll see if we have a second. Second for Trustee Burgess. I'm going to second it because um, I saw Mr. Spina come to every single meeting and um, answered all of our questions and took phone calls during that period of time prior to his appointment. So I'm going to second it on the fact that I saw the work being done and also um, he had an open door policy as far as us contacting him. So that's why I'm going to second it tonight because I saw the work being done. It, it, frankly, it probably would be a good idea for the board to have a separate vote on each invoice. Sounds good. So, I need a motion to approve the first invoice from, I believe, 515. Do I need to call the whole board? We have a motion on the board. Yeah, yeah. The motion for division? Yeah. Actually, no, he has a motion for both. No. Do no? we ask for a motion for division? Oh, I asked for a motion vote. for division. However, there's already a motion on the floor and there's already a second on the floor. So, which is why I asked for a motion for division before we had a second. Um, so now... When you say division, you mean deal with each bill separately? Yes. I think that's a great idea. Right. And that's what... So sorry, maybe second. amend the motion. No, right. so, no yeah. um, second. she seconded right. his motion. Okay. So I'd like to have... I'll make sure we got this right. We have a motion and a second right now on both. I like Trustee Burgess, if he chooses, to amend his motion to say to separate the bills, but it be the first bill. Yeah, okay. I'll amend my motion to approve the first bill. I need a second. I'll second it. So, the motion and a second. This is for the first bill. Any other questions? <coughs> Call roll. Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Benford? No. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Now we have the second bill. So moved. Motion Trustee Benford. Second. Second Trustee Burgess. Any questions? Call roll. One second. I have motion by me. Okay. Trustee Raven? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Mm -hmm. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor. Yes. Okay. Letter J. Cavdal, Grumley, and Grohold. Grohold. Um, I sent out an email to Matt Campbell, who was the previous attorney for the township, and asked him some questions. He said that unfortunately he could not make it tonight, and he asked if the if we could table his bill to the next meeting. So I need a motion to table. So Motion Second. Trustee Burgess. Second Trustee Benford. Any questions? Call roll. Trustee Rappa? Yes. Trustee Dunford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Letter K, DuPage Challenger Vendor Policy. Uh, Mr. Spina was working on something and <coughs> did not accomplish it in time for the meeting. And I, so I will definitely have a proposed <coughs> uh, resolution relative to how we're going to deal with vendors, the payment of vendors, and the claims with law, etc. <coughs> to the next meeting for consideration. Sounds good. So I need a motion to table. So, second. 
Motion trustee Burgess, second trustee Benford. Any questions? Call the roll. Trustee Rafa? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Time for discussion. Um, at the previous meeting, I believe, uh, Wheatland Township asked if they can use our township bus. Um, Mr. Spina said that we should probably look at into how our insurance company would allow us to do that. Uh, we, uh, Amy Albright actually sent an email to our um, vendor and said he explained that the insurance follows the vehicle, not the person. He suggested that we request from Wheatland a certificate of insurance naming us as the insured as well as evidence of workman's comp insurance. He suggested that our attorney can draw up an agreement that will either be responsible for our deductible or the whole cost of anything should happen. So. If the insurance company is on board, it is something we can do if the board can so desires. But I would agree we need to have a specific agreement in case there's an accident or something like that. And it's not a motion uh, scenario we have to but I wanted to let you know that We'll be asking Mr. Spina to write that up. Okay, that's it for me. Do you want me to do it? Uh, yeah, I've uh, asked the Supervisor Mayor to read the letter that I'm going to submit to the board. Dear Supervisor Mayor, this has been a long and difficult decision, but I find it's time that I submit my resignation as DuPage Township Clerk, effective November 30th, 2018. I understand that my current term is set to run until May 2021, but I now I feel that it is due to multiple what is that? Is that medical conditions. It will be the best time for me to step down from my position. During the course of the past 18 years of serving as DuPage Township Clerk, I have been very blessed by my many interactions with the residents, staff, and also various boards and board members. I'm very honored and humbled that the community has entrusted me to serve throughout my tenure as DuPage Township Clerk, and I will always remember these, very, these years very fondly. Serving as an elected official, I know there are still obligations that I am expected to complete. I would like to meet them with you during the next week to discuss and help to organize a suitable transition to fill my position. Patricia M. Stack, DuPage Township Clerk. <laughs> My heart is definitely with the township, but uh, at this time I just definitely really have to take care of my health conditions, and uh, that's why it's important to step back. So thank you for your understanding. Thank you to the public. Sincerely, just it's been an honor, really has been an honor to serve. It's been an honor to work with our township board and our township staff. Uh, it's definitely going to be something I'll miss, but I will be around. I won't be completely gone. I'd like everyone just to give um, Trish just a round of applause for all of those. Um, Here, the 
programs that I have going forward, the trips that I have. Um, I listed the amount of people that I intend to take. Um, I show the amount of comps that the, it's important, you know, to me to let the public know that 99.9% .9 of the time when I take them to uh, some place, they always comp the leader and most of the time the bus driver as well. Um, very, very, very few times do the township or taxpayers pay for uh, a ticket for me to go somewhere with them. I don't care if it's out of the country, out of the state, or to the jury lane. You know, I mean, they, they comp it. So what I listed on here for all of you is uh, the cost of the ticket price versus what I charge. I generally always charge in the past. What I pay, they pay. I understand now that I have to include, you know, like the, the fee of the bus driver and uh, for their hourly wage as well as um, if there is a ticket price for either one of us. So, you know, going forward, some of these things were already planned and the prices were already in place. So I, I had not been able to do that. But going forward now, it's now time for the new newsletter. So with, you know, October and November and going forward, uh, the adjustments will be made. But on this paper, and I don't think you want me to list them all, but this is what I have coming up going forward and how much it costs per person. Plus we are taking a trip to Nashville from the 15th to the 19th. Okay, aside from that, Lynn, I had a quick question. Yes. The um, the numbers in the parentheses, is that the like member price and the non-member price? No, everybody gets charged at the same price at this time. Okay. So what it is is the price that I charge per person versus what it cost us. In the parentheses would be what, what it cost us. Okay, so that's just the extra for the bus. <coughs> for the bus driver, right. Okay. Okay, and then you'll see on the other sheet of paper, um, I have a letter written to the board. Um, speaking for the Levy board, I understand that we need to ask permission to use the Levy Center, you know, for different functions we have in the past used for uh, bingo as our biggest fundraiser. Uh, the Levy board is a, a fundraising arm, as we solely act, you know, as an as an arm to run, raise funds for the betterment of the township. I mean, of the Levy Center. I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate that. <laughs> the Levy Center. We're pre prejudiced. <laughs> We're always over there. Currently, it is our desire to put a new marquee in the front. The light bulbs are out. If you notice on some of those, and it's so old that you can't even replace the bulbs. So we need to, um, we need to upgrade it. And we're about there, but I. Don't know when's a good time, but I also was going to ask for some help. So your request to host the bingo extravaganza on October 25th uh, could be on the next agenda. Uh, we can't act on it because it's not on this agenda. Ah. Oh. Okay. So uh, we've been spending quality time with the staff trying to reshape a little bit. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Of, that's okay. Uh, the policies and procedures <laughs> and making sure that we're getting out and ahead of it. Um, I know that uh, some of the seniors, one million percent not naming any names, would like to have people who live outside the township, if they go on a trip, to be to get charged more. And I think that's something for the senior committee to one that starts up to be like one of the first things they have to deal with. Um, basically, is to try to understand that the separation from friends of the Levy is different than the government body, or the Bloomberg Senior Club is different than the government body. Uh, any questions? Seeing none. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go down to G A E A. And please, no, no names. Oh, As you know. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> First, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Um, I'm going to give the general assistance report, and I'm also going to give the youth department uh, report. General Assistance has been very busy um, within the past few weeks. Um, I work really closely with the outreach program, which is Will County Center for Community Concerns. 
Um, that program right now is helping with the hardship program for ComEd. As of October the 1st, we will be hosting here on Monday and Wednesday from 9 to 3. We'll have Will County Center here helping with the Low Income Energy Assistance Program. And that helps our families that are here in our township, also along with the Will County residents. Um, as of Wednesday, September 26th, I have a meeting here with Will County Center discussing our outreach program, kind of seeing what area they want to go, if they want to keep it the same, if they want to give more dates, depending on how many people are flowing in. They're, they're looking at maybe trying to get back to Friday, if it's possible. So I told them we would have to talk about this, so we're going to meet tomorrow. Um, I've probably this week probably seen over about 30 families within the past few weeks, probably the last four weeks. Um, something I do kind of want to bring up is I'm running into a lot of disgruntled family members, as Bill and I have talked about. Um, when families come in as a process, there's a procedure that they have to go through in order to get the funds that they want. I'm finding out that people don't want to bring in the paperwork. They don't want to do what they have to do. When they come in, they're upset with me. Then they want to speak to someone. All the time, my supervisor is not available. I have to call him. He has to get in touch with them to kind of sh not shake things up, but mild things down. Um, I just kind of want to, you know, bring this up to everybody. If we can just kind of come up with something later on in the future, just to kind of protect me. Excuse me. Kind of protect me when it comes to families that are coming in, because I'm getting to the point where, if they're upset and I'm doing the best that I can. I need somebody that can come in and say, yes, Kimberly's doing the right thing. No, Kimberly's not doing the right thing. And it's always my word against the family member, which I try to do things the right way and I try to do everything by the book. But it's pretty hard when a person is upset and they don't, they don't want to hear that they can't get what they want. So just later on in the future, since we're going over policies and all that good stuff, if that's something that you all could look into to for me and for the other the staff members here too because a lot of times I have to pull the other staff members in on conversations just so I'm not the only one that has contact with the individual that may come into the office. Real quick now, mm -hmm. um, so that would fall under the supervisor only, so okay. it won't be under any of the committees, okay. but I understand and I'll kind of give them a, a quick story if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, um, Kimberly was dealing with a family, um, they reached out to her, she filled out the paperwork. Um, and they, the last part is one part of information, and they have not given it. Um, they came in here looking for a, a check out of general assistance, and they have not given the last part of the information, and Kimberly said, uh, we can't give you the check. Um, so they emailed her several times. They emailed me. I called. I reached out to the person who I need to get the last bit of information. For example, I don't have the last bit of information yet. So that, I think that's something, for example, is what you're kind exactly. of dealing with. Exactly. Um, and thank you, thank you, Bill, for that, because unfortunately I had to pull a lot of people that works in the office. I had to get them involved with that. Um, I also want to share the Youth Department the report. Um, October the 20th, we have the STARS Convention that Students Taking a Responsible Stand. This the STARS Convention is hosted at the middle school. This year will be at Jay and Adam Middle School. Um, this is an all-day event. The board has budgeted for $5,000 for this particular event. And one of my questions that I want to bring to the board is, if you're giving me $5,000, do you want me to, each event that I host, do you want me to come back and tell you what I spend the money on? Yeah. OK, OK, all right. I just want to make sure, even though you've already budgeted for me. OK, so. All right, so. Not yet, so that's, she's talking about, you know, to make sure everybody on the understands. So she's not talking about general assistance or emergency Right, this is, this is the youth department. the youth department. So do you want me to give that to you now, in per se, so I can kind of tell you a little bit of ideal how much money is out there that I've already budgeted for? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, one of our speakers, our first AM speaker is $1,000. Our second speaker is $400. Our third speaker I'm still searching, which is for the parents. We have the DJ, which is 300. The kids have breakfast doing this event because this is an all-day event. Um, right now, I have a quote out there of $760. We have lunch. I have two quotes that are out there, and we're ranging between $1,500 and $1,700 for 250 students along with the staff. I also have 
training classes for RHS students and Bolingbroke students. And these students come back and they give back to this particular program and help us, they're leaders through this program. So we train them and we serve them pizza while we train them. So we ask them to come after school. So I'm looking at maybe $120 total for both of those particular dates. Unfortunately this year I've got a little bad news. Deb Eichen will not be part of STARS this year. Um, due to a lot of different illness and things that are going on with her family. So we do have one can, of the... Can you give us a real brief overview of what STARS is? Mm -hmm. STARS is, uh, it, first of all, it stands for Students Taking a Responsible Stand. It's our leaders that are in our middle schools. So we have kids that are great leaders. We have some kids that are falling through the cracks. We have some kids that just need that little extra push to get out there and to just vibe, vibe with themselves and getting out there into the community and getting out there in the schools and being good leaders. STARS gives them this throughout the day. We break off in little small components, um, teaching the kids how to build up memberships, not to build memberships, but build friendships, uh, be great leaders, uh, don't bully. One of our things was bullying. Um, there's bullying everywhere. So we teach the kids, how do you get out of being bullied? You know, if you're right there and your friend is being bullied, what can you use? How, how can you walk away from it besides saying, you know, oh, getting into it with them? You don't want to do that. For instance, this year, let me just tell you what the theme is for our STARS convention, which is kind of different for all of us. It's building leaderships and communities. And that's, that's what this is all about for the kids this year. We're trying to get the kids out into the community, building leadership, getting out there, seeing what, what you want to do, and, and being out there and being a great leader. Can I add so, to that? Yeah, because yeah, sure. I um, attended one of the one of King Stars programs. Mm -hmm. One of my children um, was in it. One of them was a great leader. <laughs> uh, I will never forget their program. The kids come in, they have the teachers and the, um, the staff of the school line up, and they all apply, and the kids run through the line as everybody applies, and they like shout things at them like, you're a great kid, you know, um, you're always nice, or whatever. The energy that goes on at that STARS program is through the roof. And as a, as a youth advocate for many, many years, I've never seen a program like it. So um, I'm totally um, impressed by it. I love to see the energy, and I think the kids really do leave. I don't think it's a program that the kids kind of just sit through on a Saturday and kind of make the best of it and leave. I think it's very interactive, very fun, and I think people really leave pumped up. So they really do. I'm a real star supporter. Thank you, thank you very much. And they, they really do leave pumped up, and not only do they leave pumped up, <coughs> we leave pumped up, the volunteers leave pumped up. It's nice when you go into a store and you see somebody wearing one of the warm fuzzies and you know what that's all about, and they want to give you one and give you this bit big warm hug, tell you something really nice about yourself. So it really is a great day. So if you all do get an opportunity, I know the public is not welcome because it is a school event, but for my board of trustees, if you are available on October the 20th, please come out and, and check it out because it's really an awesome program. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, coordinator. I've never done this before, so I incorporated a um, my profit for the last two weeks that's including salary and liquor cost. The profit for the entire month of September because I don't have any parties next week or this weekend, so I'm done. Um, I am booked 90% for the fiscal year with only 15 days available until January that are available to book. Um, for next year, I'm about 60% booked. I don't have any Saturdays from April through October. I was going to ask you, and when you say that you're booked, what, what days are you referring to? Every Saturday from April through October is booked. I've got three dates left in May and three dates in June available, and I have three bookings for 2020. Uh, again, for people who might be new in the audience, the banquets uh, offset the cost of all the utilities for the Levy Center and actually pays for the leasing of the two senior buses. Uh, we've had a discussion with the previous auditor. I think that should be town and we'll be looking at dealing with that, but thank you very much. Do you have any questions? I say great occupancy, Kelly. Thank you. Just have booked in the year, that's a great occupancy. <laughs> Attorney report. Uh, just a couple of items. Um, I'd like to, I think the board should give a special thanks to Amy. She has been working very hard, responding to FOIA requests, and I've been helping her with, with, with a few of those items. Um, Let's give Amy a round of applause. You look like you need one, Amy. Yes. Yay, Amy! Yes. 
Terry, you really like attention, don't you? <laughs> Give it to her. With, with Terry being out, it's all been falling. Yes. Yeah. So she's been doing it. She's been trying really hard. Um, I received some correspondence from IPMG, the township's insurer, regarding reservation of rights following the, um, the litigation with Ms. Young's. Um, it's basically information only because the litigation was resolved. And it sets forth our coverage, but I'll share that with the uh, with you guys. But um, other than that, I have other comments. Okay, approval of township bills of thirty-six thousand one hundred fifty-nine dollars and thirteen cents, and open payables of eleven thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and thirteen cents. Pay payables from nine twelve to eighteen through nine nineteen of eighteen of twenty-four thousand one hundred sixty dollars. So moved. Most interesting purchase. Second. Second, trustee Raga. Any questions? I only have one question, um, Attorney Spina, um, and I'm asking for click, or just for my own sake. What is the statutory provision that says it's okay for us to spend money on like grades and events? Is there a certain provision that covers all of that? That's a very general, very, very general question. We we can spend money. Uh, we have. The authority we have is the authority that's set forth in the statute and, and none others. It's called Dillon's Rule. Um, go, going forward, I know that there was procedures in the past, but going forward, we're going to look at each particular program that we want to do, and we're going to find out, one, whether we're allowed to do it, and two, which fund it can properly be paid, for, paid out of. So, Okay. A motion and a second. Call roll. Trustee Rocco? Yes. Trustee Benford? Yes. Trustee Oliver? Yes. Trustee Burgess? Yes. Supervisor Mayor? Yes. Any old business, new business? Seeing uh, comments or questions from the press? You're not press. I know. Okay. Yes, sir. Please just state your name. My name is Kirk Allen. Um, I had a question on the motion that you made in regards to the township officials uh, conference, I believe it was. Yes, sir. Would you mind repeating what that, sir. that motion was? I trust you have it, or I, I can give you a generalization. Uh, yeah, you're going to go. Okay. Wait, the generalization is to let uh, the staff and elected officials go to township officials in Illinois annual conference in Springfield, Illinois. So it included the staff as well. I, I thought that it was just the board and then someone had asked about was it the staff as well and that's why I wanted to Oh, okay. Vacation. Yeah, it's both. All right, thank you. Sure. Any other questions from the press? Press only. Okay, so you have questions from the public. Yes, sir, in the back. So state your name, please. Gary Hoffman. Yes, sir. I just have a question regarding <clears throat> Kimberly when she gave that report on, on that GA assistance. Uh, and again, I'm just, I don't know about the form. I'm, I'm assuming it is a form like an application. My other question is, the information that is asked of the people that are applying, is that solely their responsibility, or is there a portion on that form where certain information is out of their control and they have, you have to get from another agency? Because to me, if I'm coming in, and asking for two hundred dollars to pay for my gas bill, and you give me this form, and I fill it out completely, there should be no question of why they don't want to fill out that form, unless it's a personal matter. But it seems like it should be pretty cut and dry. You either fill out the form completely, or you're not getting no money. It shouldn't. Right. It shouldn't I, have to be, you know, into a confrontation with her. Or for Kim, they have to call you. To me, it seems like a pretty simple process. Uh, but I got lost. Sorry. I thought maybe there's a certain section on that application that you might have to get from another agency or something. Go ahead, Kim. Okay, so <laughs> this particular client, I did do the honors and try to go get the information the best way that I know, <coughs> which was through the assessor's office. Unfortunately, that information backed up to the same address, which was something that I could not accept. So that brought up red flags for me. So with the red flags, I requested the information that I needed, and I wanted it only from the person that I needed it from and not the, particular, not the client themselves, because at that point I didn't trust it. Hopefully that answers your question. 
Yeah. Kind of, as you, okay, well, it's I'm sure it's a humbling experience. It, it's it's in it. it can't really you know, say the, the Come in here and, and, and ask for money. I, and I sure. appreciate that. Un unfortunately, as in, in business, right. and basically as we look at it as customer service, right. and if you're coming here, most likely you are in need of some sort, um, and you are definitely uh, coming to us for help. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes people wait to the very last second to get it. Uh, but we need to, you know, follow those rules and procedures. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Judy. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Broadway, private citizen, DuPage Township. Um, going back to the invoices that were passed for paying the attorney, Bina, could you please tell me the amounts because I did not see the bills. So I apologize. Yes. The, the first invoice that... The first invoice covered uh, May of 2018 through August 1st of 2018. That was $5,442.75. Okay. The other one covered August 14th through August 28th. That was $3,287.50. Okay. How much was that? $3,287.50. I know this one was um, tabled, but we're looking at over $10,000 for the um, previous attorney. Um, Kavanaugh's, we're looking at $10,360.14 right. for the next meeting. Right. Just that that was announced at the last meeting, and we tabled it, so I didn't inquire about that. My second question is, again, what is the status of um, Terry Bennett, uh, Bethune, is she on medical leave? Are you paying her? Is it job abandonment? Do you have a bookkeeper's position open? Um, Mr. Spina. Uh, it is my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Terry is currently using her sick, her, her crude sick days. Um, and that's as far as I know where we're at. As far as she is being paid and... She has accrued sick days that she's entitled to. And they rolled over from year to year? I'm yeah. assuming I don't know the yes. answer to that. Yeah, so, so the answer to that question that you're going to ask in a second, uh, the handbook was actually uh, originally, at least in my tenure, written by the uh, law office of Kavanaugh. Um, and then the handbook was actually then given to the Illinois Public Risk group um, and the their agency actually looked at our handbook and decided to give it to us with their recommendations and I believe it was January of this past year this board sat here and actually approved that handbook and so uh, if you have any questions about that if you see Mr. Kavanaugh out there you might want to ask him no I don't I'm <laughs> asking you the status of an employee who you are now telling me is using her sick leave does she has she brought in a medical excuse for it? Uh, we can't. We can't answer that. Well, you're paying her, and she hasn't been here for about three uh, months. Unfortunately, now. there's certain privacy issues relative well, to, to know, those Well, I know, but things. she's getting paid in the process, and I know. Thank I you. Still Thank feel you. We need to know this I appreciate it. Any next question? Yes, sir. In the back, please just state your name. I'm trying to see out of this. Third hold it, hold it. Sorry, hold on, sir. Name, please. James, guys. I'm trying to see out of uh, this 36k that's paid out. How much of it actually generates money to the? To the how much? How? Which one of these programs on here generates money out of the 36k that was dished out? Approval of township bills. Approval of the 36. Does any of this generate money at all? 36k. Well, the banquet actually generates money. But okay. You look yeah, where at can that. I could go find those numbers? Yeah. So the banquet again. So the banquets. Uh -huh. So the Levy Center. Uh -huh. um, Monday through Friday is the senior center. Uh, seniors get to do line dancing and crafts and interact in the Bloomberg Senior Club. Go there, and then on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, uh, the banquet facility, same thing, takes over. Uh, Kelly's in charge of that, and you can have your wedding. You can have a birthday, you can have whatever type of event you want. So you can rent the inside of the building, you can rent the outside of the building, you can have a tent. 
uh, you can have it by the fountain. Um, and that revenue that comes in, make sure that we don't have to charge the taxpayers uh, money, tax dollars, for the utilities of that entire building. On top of that, we had, uh, in my personal opinion, it was just mine, a disagreement with the auditor because there's two senior buses, they're light and they say DuPage Township, uh, the revenue went to actually offset that cost. It actually went there. I thought that should be a town fund expense, but they said it should be because it's not owned, that it's a lease, that it should come out of banquets. Uh, on top of that is that if there's certain civic groups, senior groups that are looking for things, they can come to the board and we can actually pay that out of banquets. It's not tax dollars. Um, kind of give you an idea. We have levied the exact same dollar amount for the last 10 years. Uh, it's like 2.3 million, but we levied the same rate. Basically, we kept it the exact same dollar amount for the last 10 years. And about the clerk, um, I don't know where she owns two positions. She hired herself to be her own assistant. I think that's to the north. Hold it, hold it. Okay, I'm just, you know. That would be the government body to our north. That would be the village of Bloomberg. Okay. The village of Bloomberg? Yeah. Right town, yeah, right. wrong government body. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I don't know if they actually give a clerk's report, but if they start in about two minutes, and that's right over here at Villa Top. Two minutes? Yeah, they start at 8 o'clock. <laughs> okay, any other comments from the public? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Steve Zirkus. Yes, sir. Uh, basically, I may have missed this because I was late, but. No problem. Uh, Anything more on the forensic audit? Has it been reviewed yet? Yeah, so it's been reviewed. The, the whole board had it. I've okay. got it. I've gone to staff and instantaneously implemented different uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. I've been in contact with Andy Mace, who was from Klein Hall, and said, okay, so you had an issue with this. Can I handle it like this? Would this, mm -hmm. this, would this solve the issue? And he said, yes. Or no, and you're like, no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna answer it. Uh, we had a uh, audit committee, which I picked myself <coughs> and Mary Pat and Trish, but now I gotta find somebody, and I'll do that in the next meeting to be on it and to go with sit down with staff and make sure that we're implementing all the different changes. Okay, so the, you got it. The audit committee is new. Audit, yes. So the audit com committee is new. So it's like the seniors. We don't have to wait 30 days though. Okay. However, um, I think staff is here with, if, if you want to answer, I would say is have I made some changes in it effectively yes. Yes. Um, to change how we are doing things? Yes. Yes. Could you give us a, when will you guys be able to give us a detailed report on what the findings were? I read the 13 page sure. forensic, which is a report, I'd call it light. Uh, but, you know, you're what they're bringing up, what you're seeing as the correct way to do it, and how you're going to implement it. Mm, what I'd like to do is have that committee put together, that's something that's right. not off the top of my head, but yeah, I would get to have the committee uh, make that and put it together. For example, is uh, the cash in your hand, get out of your hands as fast as possible. Sometimes in uh, for example. next month or the month after that? Hopefully, uh, again, as fast as humanly possible. I mean, we're trying to get it done. Second question, such sure. a different subject. Sure. Uh, I know there's been talk about the, uh, the QuickBooks and so forth and so on. Issues, I'm not interested in the issues. I'm just curious, has that system been implemented? No. Has it been put in place? No. Um, so it was started. Uh, board did not approve the QuickBook conversion, um, per se, uh, to have that whole mechanism. And that's led to some of the issues that we had. Um, we then we had a forensic auditor that was chosen by the board. Uh, we paid a substantial amount of money to that forensic auditor. Uh, his recommendation to, to us as a board was not to use the exact same thing that we were going to go to do. Um, the program that AMS, which is the program that Township uses, um, <coughs> I think it's not a bad program. Uh, there's plenty of townships that use the program and they use it effectively. Uh, what we're finding, since uh, Linda's been doing it right now, is there are some safeguards or some easier ways of doing things, and I think that we can uh, progress with that uh, for the foreseeable future. I think that um, 
we, we might be okay with using that particular program. It has some positives, it has some negatives, uh, but there's many uh, townships across the state of Illinois that actually use that program. Okay, so it's a municipal uh, GL system? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's a government municipal. It's been around for, I think, like 30 years. Um, there's plenty of townships that use it. Um, I think some of the issues uh, were not program-based. Next question. Yes, ma'am. Lorraine Guild, um, we submitted a letter to the board for the Red Hats to use the bus on October the 11th. And I was just checking to see if that's going to be the procedure from now on, is we have to submit a letter and to pay for the driver also. Uh, yeah, for right now, um, what I like to do is, uh, let's see, I don't know the date. Yeah, Trish, you know the date of the next meeting? Uh, and I have not. I did bring the letter over tonight. Okay. Is it, is it Tuesday? I know my so we'll have it on the next agenda. <laughs> so the board. So okay. thank you. So so make sure we're all on the same page. And I know this is changing policy, and it's going to take a little bit. But if a senior group or a youth group or whatever the case may be wants to use the Levy Center. Um, we're going to ask to have it before, and we'll put it on the agenda. I know you're saying you gave it to her. I apologize. You did not make this agenda. Um, we'll put it on the agenda. Uh, if they want to use a bus, we'll have it on the agenda, and the board will then approve it or disapprove it. Well, we need to know because we asked for October the 11th, and I submitted the letter last week. I brought it in, and I gave it to, um, who did I give it to? The front desk. But... Okay. Yeah, I apologize. So right now, right, it's not in front of, I can't put it on the agenda. I can't say. You can, you can discuss it, but you can't do, take any action on it. So I can say is, would you be okay with it? You, the board can discuss it, but you can't take any action if it's not on the agenda. You can't take any final action. Okay. If we put it on the agenda, uh, the trustee Raga, would you have, a, a, would you be willing to let them use the bus? Absolutely. Trustee Benford. That's fine. You, if you put it on the agenda or? It will be on the agenda. Oh. Okay. So this is not a vote. This is just a. How would you feel as of right now? Trustee Burgess? Yes. Trustee Elmer? I would be fine. Okay, so we'll put it on the agenda. Okay, and we'll know by October the 11th, or before. Before. <laughs> the 9th is the 9th. The 9th is the 9th. I just going to take some used to getting used to it. I apologize. <laughs> Questions from the public? Yes, sir. Gary Marshall. Yes, sir. You were, you were, there was some comments about going forward that there would be uh, some policy as far as what you could pay for and what you could not pay for. And I think you were talking to the, uh, the township attorney on, and you said there will be a process. What, who will make the decision as to what is appropriate for the township to pay for and what is not appropriate? Sounds good. Uh, so what we have, and tell me if you uh, believe I'm speaking incorrectly, is we have a group, they want to do something, just like the seniors, but we're going to get it to where they go from the senior committee. The senior committee will meet on it, and then they'll have the liaison will come to the board, and the board will then recommend either yes or no, of course with attorney approval. Yeah, but there's a lot of other items that come up, such as like if the Lions Club asks for a donation or a contribution, that doesn't fo follow the youth or the senior committee. So who makes the decision as to whether that's an appropriate Illinois, thing? Illinois statute makes that decision. And okay, if, and something, what does it if, say? if there's something that we can do within the confines of the Illinois statute and the board wants to do it, they will do it. If it's not an expenditure that's allowed, Unfortunately, I'm sorry to throw cold water on it. If it there was something that you guys were told in the past you could do, I might be telling you, I know it's a great thing, but you guys don't have the authority to do it. Correct. So it'll be on a case by case basis. So uh, uh, a few people have already asked because their uses is asking, hey, we're going to have a golf outing in June, July. No. And then you have a committee, if it's in youth or seniors, then we can look at it, the committee. We'll go to the liaison, the liaison will go to the board. Any other questions from the public? Yes, sir. Um, John Kraft. The, a couple comments, or uh, actually one question. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think she was uh, intending to ask, does your policy require an individual after so many sick, day, sick days to prove that they actually are excused from work for being sick by a doctor. 
I think that was probably the question she was trying to get at, but oh. I don't want to speak for her. So I'll just phrase that as my question. Does your policy require somebody to prove that they're actually sick? From the doctor? Yeah, we had something from the doctor. But your policy requires them to do that. Okay. Uh, another item on these committees. Yes, sir. Um, I recommend that the board members or the trustees, even if they haven't been appointed to a committee, uh, that they attend the committee meetings mm -hmm. because they are authorized to attend committee meetings. Mm -hmm. Even if the committee goes into executive session, they can attend the executive session. Um, and I also recommend that the committee's first order of business is to write a set of bylaws as to what the <coughs> committee is for. And that will solve all kinds of Open Meetings Act problems later on when you have a majority of a quorum of the trustees show up at a committee meeting if they're discussing youth sports and that's a committee, then it's not a township trustee meeting, it's a committee meeting of the youth sports. Even if they're not on the committee, they can still show up in ten. That's, that's the purpose of bylaws. Um, unfortunately, well actually fortunately, I see a lot of rule changes and I appreciate the rules changes and I appreciate uh, deferring to the statute, and I appreciate deferring to Dillon's rule. Um, and when you come up with rules for expenditures, I would hope you would include, even though the statute already prohibits it, some things that are prohibited, like advance pays, payment in advance of actually doing the job. Um, and no offense to the attorney, but that would also include getting paid prior to being uh, hired by the board or board approval, whether they perform the duty or not. Um, uh, complete accounting of all funds, including banquet profits of the banquet fund, uh, any money coming into the possession of the township or public funds, doesn't matter what they're using. Or they're all public funds first, and every penny has to be accounted for. Oh, okay. uh, which is a FOIA request I've been waiting on for quite some time. But I had a phone call today, I'm happy waiting another week or so. Um, the so, yeah, and, and the bank of profits. Uh, pilot money, rent money, food pantry money, all of that needs to be accounted for. Uh, and your expenses need to have receipts with it. The food services, NAPA, fish fry money has to be accounted for. Um, and, I, and I would hope that at some point you post all the expenses online with the receipts that go with it and an explanation of what it was spent for. So that's all I have for that. Oh, wait, one more. Sorry. <laughs> I just wrote it here. Um, the, the threshold for placing something out to bed, um, and, and particularly the printing service, if, you, if throughout the fiscal year you exceed the bid threshold and you continue to do that year after year, I, I believe you should be required to place the print job, the printing out for bid. Um, because you're going over the threshold, the whatever, 10,000, 15, 20,000, whatever it is for a township. 19, nine, Yeah, so if you continually exceed the threshold through the fiscal year, you should be putting that out for bid so other print shops have an opportunity to bid on, you know, what you're doing. Or when you get to... $19,500 in the year, then go to another print shop for the rest of it. However you want to do it, but I think it needs to be put out for a bit. Thanks. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Thank you, Kirk Allen. Um, I'd like to address the general assistance. As a former township supervisor, one of the things that we implemented that solved the problem that was outlined tonight, you have general assistance and emergency assistance, and we put together a checklist and in that checklist, it included all the mandated things that individual had to provide. Mm -hmm. It also had a statutory clause at the bottom of it, and attached to it was 
Section 6, 11, and 12 of the Public Aid Act, which specifically spells out what is allowed to be spent on general assistance. And those requirements, we handed it to them, they were made well aware of it, and it really alleviated a lot of problems because there's the law. It's cut and dry. Um, in regards to that general assistance, now I appreciate the attorney pointing to there's going to be changes. Is any of those changes going to include recovery of the money from general assistance that was spent in violation of the law? Mr. Spino. I have not yet had a chance to review those, so I can't answer that question. This All right. I, I would encourage a deep dive be put into that. I did read your forensic audit, if that's what they want to call it. It didn't address any statutory authorizations. It didn't answer a whole bunch of questions that were raised. Um, I don't even know that I would call it an audit, quite frankly. Uh, but looking at some of the expenditures, you know, and, and again, your attorney mentioned it, there's a lot of programs that feel good. Don't get me wrong. We all want to do good things. As a supervisor, the one thing I learned was ask two key questions. Says who with what proof? The other one, from a board standpoint, before you ever vote on something, get an answer to one question. Where is the statutory authority to take the action I'm getting ready to take? And if you don't have that statutory authority or, and or case law to back it up, table it until you do. And the reason I say that, some of these, these expenses on here, Bolingbroke Police Benevolent, hey, I'm also for supporting the police, but that's not general assistance. Not in any way, shape, or form. American Association of Retired Asians. Um, allied Benefit Systems. Three grand to them. Crickets Club. Three grand. These are not general assistance. General assistance is public aid. It's specific. Section 6, 11, and 12 of the Public Aid Act. And it's a crime to spend general assistance outside of those statutory guidelines. And there's a substantial amount of money there that's been spent, and I will say illegally, and I think there needs to be board action to implement the recovery of that money, because that's taxpayers' money. When you levied it from the public under general assistance levy, you told the public, I'm taking your tax dollars for X, Y, Z under the Public Aid Act. And when you spend it on something outside of that authority, you lied to the public. I would even go to the extent of saying you stole from the public, because you took it and used it for something that was never authorized by law. The other issue, township services under section 85-13. It's very specific what you can and can't do and what are required. In one of the outlines, the township board may either expend funds directly or may enter into cooperative <coughs> agreements or contracts with other government entities, not-for-profit corporations, not-for-profit community service associations, and any for-profit business. And it outlines what those services are to be. Do you have those contracts with those entities you're doing business with? Not right now. That's why we have a new, new attorney. Okay. The second element of that, take a hard look at conflicts of interest. Because when board members or a supervisor sits on any of those organizations, that's a conflict of interest. Those nonprofits, they're required to file 990s by law. We will be requesting those 990s to get the financial details that are required by law including the rest of those corporate documents as the IRS outlines. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. James Grzynia. Uh First of all, Trish, thank you for 18 years. I wish you the best going forward. Um, I just have one request. On the supervisor's report, there is no public comments allowed, but there is no information given to the public before you bring these up. So, cyber group proposal, you're talking about it, but the public doesn't have any information. I am requesting that instead of just this single sheet of paper going over the agenda, to please have the backup documentation. I understand you have the open and the paid payables up here, greatly appreciated, but if you could actually either list this online or actually have it part of the packet so that the public can actually see what's going on, it would be greatly appreciated for just visibility and so the public knows when it comes to public comments. You don't have questions, well, what was this bill for, what was that bill for, could you please reread these? People can actually read the ordinance rather than have you try to spell it out. Fair? Anything else? Any other questions? Seeing none, trustees report, trustee Benford.
first, uh, Trish, thank you for your years of service. I know you're retiring as well soon. I wish you um, wish well. And I'm sorry, Trustee Dunford. Excuse me. Go ahead, Trustee Dunford. Just was just saying, I wish you well. So, and then I have one question. Uh, what is the status of the job descriptions that we discussed a couple meetings ago? Uh, For the job, for the current positions that we do not have written job descriptions for. So, Trustee Benford, as uh, we've gone through this, is that if you have any questions, please give them an email. You can CC the attorney with myself on it. Uh, these are trustee comments, not trustee questions. Well, the reason I ask the question is because I, you know, I don't want to send him an email and have him send us a bill. So, I'm asking for the status of the job descriptions. That That's going to be definitely part of the audit committee. I uh, have definitely looked at uh, certain things, but again, it's trustee comments. I have nothing else. Trustee Burgess. First of all, thank you, Trish, for 18 years of service. It's been a fun run. I have a comment. Last Sunday, I we marched in the parade. I got done. I was sent back, went and sat back and watched the parade. I looked up, and I seen some people carrying banners for candidate Benford for her state rep race. I know a couple of the kids that were in there, and they're involved in the heart program. So I questioned the mother, why would this child be doing great? Because I know I know the family, and I know there's no way this kid would be volunteering her time. Spoke with the child. She was offered time off from the heart organization, signed off on a community service, if she marched in the parade for the cannons. I have then sent a letter to State Attorney Glasgow, and I'll read it. I'm writing to inform you of a potential issue with the Heart Organization. Several candidates for office and the children in the care of the Heart Organization. On Sunday, September 16th, I was in attendance at the Romeville Founders Day Parade. While there, I witnessed a young person walking with county clerk candidate, Lauren McPhillips, who through a personal relationship I'm aware is currently enrolled in the Heart Program. The young person is not political and, as far as I know, has no connections to Lauren McPhillips or Trustee Benford. I sent a text message to the young person's mother to ask if she was aware that her child was walking for a candidate. The mother responded, no. The mother then informed me that the child was walking the parade because a heart organization offered the children in their program a day off of class in exchange for a Sunday of community service walking in the Founders Day Parade. As far as I'm aware, walking in support of a political candidate of any party is not community service. Community service should benefit the community, not an individual candidate or office. I'm especially concerned because due to FOIA's, FOIA documents that I have become available, available in the last several months, it is clear that by her own statements that Republican candidate for state rep and DuPage Township trustee Alicia Benford is the business operations manager for the Heart Organization. Ms. Benford was also at the parade and had several young people walking in, in support of her. The possible usage of young people for political gain by offering them time off in a court-ordered intervention program is unacceptable. As a member of the DuPage Township Board of Trustees, who has financially supported the Heart Organization in the past, it is my duty to formally request that an open investigation and possible malfeasance by Lori McPhillips, Alicia Benford, and the Heart Organization. Thank you. I turn that into State Attorney James Glasgow. Two weeks ago. That's your much trusty Oliver. Well, I'm going to have to say something tonight that pains me, so I'm going to give an explanation as to why I'm saying it. And I'm glad that the cameras are here to record exactly what I'm about to say. And that is, is that most everyone in this room is aware that 34 years ago, I was an adolescent that had been arrested. So I'm a youth offender, 34 years ago. And I want to say that I am so thankful to the selfless people who step forward for children who are offenders who make wrong choices. And the lessons learned in the words of the infamous Dr. Danes, ignorance is no excuse for the law. And the other one that I love is we can choose our sin, but we cannot choose the consequence. And I am thankful for everyone that held my feet to the fire and said what you did was wrong. But you do not end up where you start. And for the last 34 years, thankful to the people that said, this is what I see in you, and this is what I see your potential to be. This is what I think your life could be if you take this route. And for the last 34 years, I have followed that advice. And I am happy to say that I have never been arrested again. And I've gone on to live a life in which I am very proud of and very thankful for the people who, who caught me at the right time. So Mary Pat Crawl became Mary Pat Oliver. 
But I don't think Mary Pat Crawl would be Mary Pat Oliver had those people not held me accountable to what I had done. I would probably be a repeat offender. I'd been in foster care. My brother aged out of the foster care system. I probably would have been a much different person. I have my husband at 34, 31 years sitting in front of me, and I'm thankful for his part in helping a wayward girl. But what I want to say tonight is what pains me about this is is that being a foster parent, adoptive parent, and sitting on a state board for the Department, Illinois Department of Children and Family Services, I have fought so hard for people who try to make money off the backs of children, okay? And I am appalled. I'm saying appalled that this took place. I don't care who it was. I don't care if it was the man on the moon. I don't care. This is, it has nothing to do with who it was. But tonight, I am going to have to say that I think we need to cut all funding to the heart organization, and that is what pains me. Because I'm going to tell you, I knew Joanne Robinson. And Joanne Robinson would be turning in her grave right now if she knew that people were getting a night off because every single solitary night was important. And she was teaching a lesson. She was showing kids the right way. And she was taking Mary Pat Crawls and making them into Mary Pat Oliver's night after night after night. So when we say, oh, no, don't, don't show up, man. Come on. We know you're slick. So we know you're not going to say anything because you're slick and blah, blah, blah. And you just come here and march for me. And I don't care who it is they're marching for. There is never going to be an explanation that will satisfy me or the late Joanne Robinson that that's taking place. I've been to her um, graduation ceremonies with the kids, and one of the things that she liked me to do is get up and say, hi, I'm Mary Pat Oliver. I'm a DuPage Township trustee, and I'm a convicted shoplifter. And the kids' eyes would go like this, and I would tell them, you don't end up where you start. You're at a crossroads, make your decision now. Are you going to go right, you're going to go left. Are you going to be a Mary Pat Crawl, or are you going to be a Mary Pat Oliver? The bottom line is, is that those kids are owed they are owed to be there every night. That is a court order that those children be there every night of that program to go ahead and graduate and go on to live successful lives. Now, when we take kids that have been convicted of things and we say, hey, you know, we know you did this. We know this is what the court says you have to do. We know this is what the program was set up to be. But, you know, hey, come on walk with us. We don't have enough clients, friends, um, church members, neighbors. There's not enough people to love us to walk with us. So we're going to take these kids over here. We're going to give them a night off and something that they should be learning. And it pains me horribly to have to say tonight that I believe that there needs to be an investigation. Not only for the children's sake, because I don't ever want to hear this again, as a community member, as a child advocate, as somebody who's walked that road, okay? but also as a taxpayer who's paying a program to give these children the next step, the next start. We don't make excuses. We don't say, we know you did wrong, but come walk with us in the parade and that's going to make it okay. No, we hold their feet to the fire. Whatever the consequences in your life are, you miss a powder puff football game, you miss a job night, whatever it is, you made that decision to make that crime and now you stand by the program to pay your repentance. It's not walking in political parades, my friends. That's not how we take wayward kids and turn them into adults and go into the world and become taxpayers and do what's right. And for the last 19 years of my life, I put my money where my mouth was with foster children, and I would never, ever, I'm just glad that that wasn't one of my children. That's all I'm getting. I'm just glad that it wasn't one of my kids that got asked to walk in a political parade and to miss a night of Joanne Robinson's um, program. And I will again tell you that she'll be turning in her grave if she thought we were giving kids nights off and letting them walk in political parades. But enough of that. You've all now heard how I feel about it, and I feel we need to have an investigation now that this is the program that she started and ran. It's still being, st still being ran to the level of excellency. And I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying we need to know for sure that it's being run to the level of excellency that Joanne Robinson started that program and gave her living and dying breath to. And to you, Ms. Tristan, <laughs> you have been a support. You have been a friend. You have been a tireless township clerk that has shown up to every one of um, the, me the meetings. You've had great attendance, um, always been available. I think it's a really big thing when somebody's serving, that they're always available to the person when they call. So I want to thank you for not just serving for 18 years, but serving with excellence. So thank you for that, Trish. And um, I know that you have a big, beautiful life, too, with all those children and grandchildren and husband. And I hope you go out and you just live your best life. Thank you, Mary Pat.
it is what it is. Trustee Ryer. Um, just once again, I'd like to congratulate you on 18 years and uh, wish you the best in your future. <clears throat> Congratulations, retirement's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there is no executive session. She so need a motion to adjourn. So motion, Trustee Burgess. <laughs> Second, Trustee Benford. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same time. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.